Of course, if you haven't done so, pause the video and reconsider, reread the question again for just a moment before listening on. It's going to be very helpful to label this diagram carefully in order to figure out how fast the ball's shadow is moving along the ground. For instance, we are told that the ball falls a distance of 16t squared. So what that's telling us is that this distance from where the ball initially begins to where the ball lands a half of a second later, that distance we can call s, and s is equal to 16t squared. It might also be helpful to call the distance that the ball is above the ground at this moment y. So we will make that label as well. We can tell from the diagram that this distance from here to here is 30 feet. And then what we will do is define the distance from the light to where the tip of the shadow is as x. Now hopefully we can see that based on those labels that the distance from here to here would be the distance x minus this distance 30. So we will make that label as well. So from here all the way out to there would be x minus 30. And so after we've made those labels, what we will do next is examine two similar triangles within this diagram. So why don't we first look at this smaller triangle that we can highlight in green. And it may be helpful to redraw that over here. So we have this smaller triangle. This is a 90 degree angle, of course. Again, we've marked the distance as y, the vertical distance, and then this distance here is x minus 30. So that's the, the smaller green triangle. There's also a larger triangle that we can color in blue right here. And we will draw that right beneath the smaller one. And we can see that the vertical distance is 50. And then the horizontal distance along the bottom we mark as x. This is also a 90 degree angle. They share this angle and this angle in common. And so whenever you have two triangles that contain two congruent angles, then they are similar. And because they are similar, we can set up a proportion. And so we're going to set up the following proportion. We'll have x minus 30 related to x. And then similarly, y will be related to the side 50. So why don't we slide down a little here and set up the proportion x minus 30 is to x as y is to 50. We want to go back and keep in mind what we're trying to solve for. The question wants how fast the ball's shadow is moving. So the ball's shadow, which is located right here, is moving a distance x as the ball itself falls. So the question is really asking us for dx dt. That would be the rate at which this distance x is changing as the ball falls and the shadow moves inward. So we need a derivative. We have to differentiate our equation with respect to time. But before doing that, why don't we go ahead and cross multiply. So we're going to multiply this way. We would get x times y. And then we can set that equal to cross multiplying the other way. So we would have 50 being multiplied by x minus 30. Let's go ahead and distribute the 50. So now we have xy equals 50x minus 1500. And at this point, we can differentiate the equation with respect to time. Of course, right here we need to be careful because we're going to need to follow the product rule. One way I like to remember the product rule is as follows. It's going to be what I call fig plus gif. And if we follow that system, then we're going to make our first function here f and our second function here g. So the product rule tells me to take the derivative of my first function. So the derivative of x with respect to time, remember, will be dx dt multiplied by the g function, which in this case is y, plus the derivative of g function. So in this case, because g is y, the derivative with respect to time will be dy dt, and then multiplied by the f function, which is x. So we have differentiated that successfully. We can move to the other side. Now the derivative of 50x with respect to time is 50 times dx dt. And then of course, the derivative of this constant is zero. 
Again, the question wants dx dt, so we will find it useful to solve the equation for dx dt. So what we'll do is subtract dx dt y from both sides of this equation. It will, of course, cancel out on the right-hand side. So now we have dy dt multiplied by x is equal to 50 dx dt minus dx dt times y. We have this greatest common factor of dx dt right here, so we're going to factor that out. So we'll factor it out as dx dt, and that will leave us with 50 minus y in the parentheses. And finally, to solve for dx dt, we will divide both sides of this equation by 50 minus y. These will cancel out, and we have our final expression for our dx dt. Apparently, it's equal to dy dt times x divided by 50 minus y. Now, we're going to make sure that we have all of these values, of course. So let's talk about dy dt for a moment. Let's go back up to the diagram. And remember the question said that s was equal to 16t squared. And furthermore, recall that the total distance from here down to here was 50. So hopefully we can see from the diagram that s plus y would equal 50. So maybe we can write that over here, s plus y equals 50. As noted, s was 16t squared. So we can write 16t squared plus y is equal to 50. We want an expression for dy dt. So what we'll do is subtract 16t squared from both sides of this equation. We'll cancel here. So now we can see that y is equal to 50 minus 16t squared. And since we want a dy dt expression, we need to differentiate with respect to time. So the y becomes dy dt. 50 is a constant, so the derivative is 0. And then here we have a basic power rule. And so we're going to move the 2 down, multiply by the negative 16. We get negative 32t. We're differentiating with respect to time. So technically, you have to multiply by dt dt according to the chain rule, but those effectively cancel out. So dy dt is negative 32t. But furthermore, the time noted, or the question noted, that the time was half of a second. So we know that t is equal to half of a second. That means we can plug in a time of 1 half. So we'll have negative 32 times 1 half of a second. And this is going to give us negative 16. And the unit will actually be feet per second because we are differentiating a distance with respect to time. So we have distance over time. This would give us feet per second. So we know dy dt is negative 16 feet per second. That will be very helpful to us. But we also need the value of x and the value of y. And so again, we go back to the diagram. And we can actually figure out y rather easily, can't we? Because we just said a moment ago that y was 50 minus 16t squared. So we'll come over here. Actually, we're going to run out of room. y was equal to 50 minus 16t squared. Again, t was a half of a second. So you'll have y equals 50 minus 16 times 1 half squared. And when you work that out on your calculator, you should get 46 feet. So now we have y might help to circle these things. So we have y, we have our dy dt, we still need x, and we can get that by going back to our proportion that we had set up. And so why don't we plug in 46 for y, and then we'll solve this for x. It may actually be easier to use this version of the proportion, the one that we obtained through cross multiplication, kind of all over the place here, but hopefully you're following along. So x times our y, which is 46, equals 50x minus 1500. So actually, it's 46x equals 50x minus 1500. Subtract the 50x, you'll have negative 4x equals negative 1500. And then finally, divide both sides of this equation by negative 4, and you will see that x is equal to 375 feet.
Okay, we've got all the values we need. We'll come down here and plug them in. So again, dy dt was negative 15 feet per second multiplied by x, which was 375 feet, all divided by 50, and that's actually feet, minus the y, which was 46 feet. This will equal dx dt. When you work this all out, perhaps on your calculator, you will indeed get negative 1500 feet per second is equal to dx dt. The fact that it's negative should make some sense because as the ball falls, this distance that we marked x is shrinking because the shadow is actually moving that way. And so as the distance of the shadow decreases, we would indeed have a negative rate.